this kind of uh, high contact and uh, expression actually brings the attention of the judges to your form, which will which has already helped you to uh, do a better presentation. Okay. Uh, what just uh, from a practical practical perspective, because a lot of judges they are old, you know, they are maybe thirty two already. <laughs> yeah, 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 and then uh, they have a lot of problems to listen in one way. So to speak loud is very good, you know, this is a requirement. Uh, but uh, in practice, uh, a little bit soften your, your voice, your tone, put it back. Because after one day of exhausted trial, the, the, the judge has already just a lot of anything and like that. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I think both, uh, both sides, uh, actually the witness side, uh, actually do a very good job. And it's not just a by play um, strictly according to what it is written on the on the paper. Because that uh, actually in a, in a real court that anything can happen. Okay. So the the, uh, the defendant and the witness can can actually play anything that if they want to play. And it's uh, we we are happy to say that you also uh, have some great great activity on that. Uh, that's uh, very nice. Okay, so this is my comment, so I will pass it to my other colleagues for us. Good afternoon. I will stress uh, uh, some general comments. First of all, you, you, you did a good job, and share with you some of my experience uh, to do a trial to prepare a trial, require, it requires two skills. Two skills. One is the skills to, to analyze the law. So pretty much, you take 56, 58, 59, you put it to elements. You apply the law to the facts provided to you carefully. Pretty much all the any standards are designed for purpose, for, for you to use to support or to they are um, one element. Right? So you list out all the elements, you carefully apply the facts and change it. Second skill is uh, storytelling. This depends on who your audience is. Right? There's no jury here. If you are going to jury, you need to elaborate more on storytelling. But even you talk to talk to judge. Still, still, storytelling is important. Judges are also human beings, right? So, especially for the closing remark, if you, 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 you watch the, the US uh, drama, right? they, they do this a lot. All right. And, I mean, being, being a judge here, of course we say we, we won't jump into the decisions, the, the verdicts, um, but, after the whole course of uh, debate, and I, I'm not sure we successfully established the the, uh, the understanding that uh, possession, constructive possession, already be built and uh, over three point uh, three point zero gram and the the rebuttal presumption is not. I know we have some, some discussion, but uh, we need to make sure that all this is uh, carefully established. If not, then we will come to 56 right, to be the, the general cause. And then, one very essential part of trial is how to raise objection and, and, and how to react to that. And this one, I think that's the sufficiently be addressed, right? So, I think one main reason is about, about language barrier, right? Because by using your second language to make that react so fast, and this requires you to, to react like, promptly, immediately. But I mean, by more and more practice, you can do better. And, of course, I'm, I'm not sure that how, how much you, you're familiar with the evidence rules. Without sufficiently uh, understanding the evidence, you will not uh, be able to, to raise your objection to, to get on this problem. 
So, um, so again, thank you, thank you, both teams. I, I will tell you, I have been uh, doing mock trials first as a student. I think the first mock trial I did, I was 11 years old was in my primary school, and we have all students come to my primary school and teachers have to do mock trial. I think the first year I was a prosecutor, and the second year I was a judge. So, um, so it's been it's been a long while. I'm also a former criminal law defense lawyer legal aid, and I did a lot of drug cases. Um, so uh, it's a real pleasure uh, to, to watch, and I know, I know how difficult it is. So I think all of you, both for the lawyer prosecutors and also really for the witnesses, because I would say it's the witnesses that it, it, it often in these, in these events, it's the witnesses that make or break, you know, and I think all the witnesses, first of all, you need your facts. I thought every single witness here was believable. And you listened, and you responded, and I think you really should be praised for supporting your team. Um, so I, I think I just want to give you first first time for that, so for the witnesses. Um, for, the, uh, for the prosecutor, for the advocates, I'm going to use the term advocates, or the prosecutor advocates, but you can not interchangeably, but uh, again, uh, to build on what was said, you definitely understood, I think, the facts of the case, and you understood the law to an extent. Um, there's a challenge in here because there's an issue of presumption, and the issue of if you, if you possess a certain amount of heroin over a certain amount, how the burden shifts. And I can tell you that this is a really, really difficult thing to understand. I work with lawyers, throughout Asia, and they don't understand it, and I think you actually began to understand it, and I think so your understanding of the law in that sense, and of course then the defense said, well, we don't even know if there were three grams, we don't even know if there were heroin, um, although your witness did admit to knowing it was heroin, or at least believing it was heroin, um, so that was something. Um, so, as we said before, the prosecution, you presented in a very sort of polite manner, the defense was more impassioned. And I think that this is an impassioned case. This may be somebody who was just, it was a mistake and was trying, you know, no good deed goes unpunished. Came in, found a bag, and went to hide it. And at the same time, you know, we're not sure. Um, there was the issue of the lab technician and motive on the lab technician. And I'll tell you, you know, it was interesting because when we, when we wrote this case, in writing up this case, we talked about, do lab technicians make mistakes? Or do lab technicians, can they be biased? And I will tell you that a month after we wrote this case, one of the states in, in, in America, they threw out thousands of convictions because they found out that one of the labs that was testing drugs was being bribed. So does it happen? Yes, it happens. Should you challenge lab technicians and what they say? You absolutely should. I work with lawyers who don't do that. I work with lawyers who just accept. The lab analysis comes in and they say it's fine. I'm like, you need to challenge the lab because they may make a mistake or maybe they're biased. Um, and I think people, you defended the lab technician, I think you challenged them. One area I think both sides should be a little stronger in, and again, that is during the cross. I think both sides pointed out with the witnesses when they were testifying some of the weak points of the witness. But when the witnesses, you'd ask them questions, it came from both sides, you'd ask them questions, and I think the witnesses sometimes didn't answer exactly what the facts were in your packet. And I think both sides, you just let it go. You ask the question, isn't it true, yes? And the witness would say no. And you were like, what do I do with that? Like, you know, okay, You're like, is it? And they were like, you were like, isn't it an apple? And the witness was like, no, it's a banana. And, but they said in the packet, they said it was an apple. And that's your chance. That's your chance to actually take the piece, the witness statement, 
and walk over to them and say, isn't it true you said this? It is the time to strike on crossing. There's no better thing to do than to show that a witness at one point said this, and then the court is saying this, and you have the proof. And that's when you actually come in and show the witness the statement. And I think it's hard because you're not yet trained in this, but you will be trained. I thought everybody did really amazingly well. Um, you actually, both sides pointed out things that I didn't think about when I was helping to write this. And I want to thank you because you really, you expanded my view of this. So that's the end of my comments. I think really a real well job done to both sides. Again, I'd like everybody to just... You tell us how we have, either when we give the scores and when we do certificates. We will be followed by the clerk and everyone else. Okay, so we're going to take one more brief recess. Thank you all for being such great participants out there and uh, for working through this. And again, I want to say how well this was organized. I know how hard to do, and you've done it with precision, I think really clear, and again, I want to thank everybody here, and I'm throughout, we're watching all of you listening to the, to the actual trial, which is why we made sure the witnesses' backs were not to you, so you were actually able to see their faces as they were testifying, because the way a witness testifies is also great, and we need to see them. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of judgment.